the Indians that lived in South Louisiana prior to the settling of this country, they definitely used oysters, they ate oysters, and in the marsh you will find where they used to go and camp and pick oysters along the shore and they'd open them and eat them and, and the shells would form their campground there. And these places are still all around South Louisiana. When the Europeans came, the, the, the commercial oyster industry really kind of took off in the 1800s, 1830s, 1840s. My family were, were fishermen all their days, traced it back to 1806. I'm a third generation Croatian commercial fisherman, and it's something that's in the blood. My grandfather started working in the oyster business back in 1904. I've been in the business, uh, let's say, about 43 years now, fourth generation. The oyster industry provided for every culture an opportunity to express themselves. A whole mix of cultures, sort of what was going on in New Orleans at the time. Spanish, you had the French, uh, and then you had Italian. And Those people that, that uh, lived in, in Yugoslavia were, were seafaring people. They lived along the coast of the Adriatic Sea. Some of them came to the United States, to Louisiana. Some of them decided to settle here. You have to be independent-minded. Most of the time you were out in the wilderness. You know, in those days people camped a lot. So you had to be your own carpenter, your own mechanic, your own financier. You know, all the things we have specialized today if you go into these fishing communities, you'll find that these men, they can do all of these things. Oysters, where they grew plentifully, were not the best of quality. They tended to be bunchy and, and, and skinny. So it was back in the 1860s, one fisherman got the idea, well, I'm gonna take some of these oysters and move it to a place where I know oysters get really good. And he did that, and he was successful in doing it. You know, all of a sudden, the quality of Louisiana oysters began to rise because uh, of that particular technique that was developed then. Each parish had its oyster resources and they jealously guarded it and wanted it for their home folks and, and in short order they, they were fished out. The state felt like a statewide commission would be able to better handle the, the resource and, and deal with it and, and protect it better. It culminated in, on the oyster side into a, a unified uh, oyster law back in the early 1900s. It was the first statewide oyster law and that put a basis of, of a statewide oyster leasing program in place. The Oyster Commission set up a, a system to lease private oyster leases to certain individuals to try forming their own oysters, you know, cultivation. The advent of oyster leasing encouraged development, encouraged uh, expansion of the farms. Leases blossom into where we're at today, you know, uh, from a few acres in 1902 to over 400,000 acres today and in county. That back then it was a pilot project that turned out to be look, a wonderful thing for a lot of families.